All of these are names are very important because they were all associated with the old days. I hear Jerome too. Mm. These are all individuals who walk with Jesus. Oh. Interesting. They were not all disci uh, disciples, however, but they knew him. Ah, uh, okay. So these were all individuals who at that time were forced to confront the reality of hypocrisy. This is a word I don't understand. It starts with H. It was like hedonism. Ah. Uh. Uh, we're using a lot of H words, hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> the taking of lives, taking of lives at a whim. The struggle for self-definition was very potent at that time. And we're bringing this up because this is one of those times. Ah. This is the time when the energy is very, very high, and there is a high likelihood of creating a new environment for the human experience. Ah. You and yours, and I don't know who to talk to, you and yours have always tried to rise above the fray, to not be caught up in the, the disturbances, the, uh, the lower thinking. That, that is true from what I know. There are many who are now coming into the realization that they have been tapped we're going to tap on the shoulder uh, to wake up. And few of them have responded. Most of them have brushed off the hand. Uh. This is what happens when you are soundly asleep. It's not very easy to respond. Or they're showing you it's like you got a mosquito or something bothering you, you just brush it off. It's just an annoyance. The few who have awakened are now taking the lead. And they are the ones that are coming into a lot of hearts, bringing them home. And to be home is to be at one with yourself, to be at one with who you are, with what you are, and with where you are. To be at home is to be free. And then here you cannot exercise free will unless you are free. You must know that you are free in your heart. And then you stand alone. And they're giving me examples of people who have stood alone even in the face of great uh, condemnation, because they were free. Hmm. And those are people like Gandhi, Jesus, Buddha, you know, others as well. They found it within themselves, found freedom within themselves. And there are some walking the planet today who have found freedom. They do not choose based on the consequences, and that's the key. Mm -hmm. If you're making a choice based on the consequences, then you are not free. You don't know who you are. You have not come home. The simplest way that we can explain this is that you are free. And they're referencing the whole thing of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hmm. You are the one who stands above. You are the one who shines the light. You are the light. 
You are the one who walks in the light. You are the light. So there's the one that shines the light, the one that walks in the light and the light. You are the three. You're connected. The one that walks in the light is connected to the one that shines the light by the light. And so the Father is the one that casts the light. The Son is the one who walks in the light. And the Holy Spirit is the one that connects them, the light itself. The light of the Holy Spirit, you probably heard that too. The faith-based life is a life worth living. It is a life born of contemplation, of conviction, and of compassion. It is a life tethered to the Almighty. You turn into it like an umbilical cord. You're always tied to that cord, to that which is, to all that is, to the Father. And the Son who lives the light, by the light that it shines upon him, is the one who brings the glory back home. Your Father created you in His image, which is to say that He made you out of love. For He is love. And therefore, you can never stray from your origins. You can think of this as they're saying as your DNA. Your DNA is love. And you can try to restrict its flow, however, you can never get far from it. This is why you are always trying to bring these three into alignment. It's difficult, or you don't understand that they cannot be separated. You cannot be separated from yourself. You cannot be separated from that which is. You cannot be separated from your heart, nor your mind. You cannot be separated from the all that is. You cannot be separated from your brother. For your brother is you and you your brother, you are together. You are one. So what they're telling me and showing me, I believe, is that the Father, the Creator, and the Son who walks in the light, uh, all the sons are of equal stature. They are all reflections of the light of the Father. They are all conceived in the hot white fire of love. You must understand that within the, the fire of love, there are many colors. And this allows for experience. It is the vast beauty of all those colors within the light that give you everything you see, feel, think, hear, enjoy. And it's there for your pleasure, for your enjoyment. It's there for you to embrace and to share with your brother. There's enough for all. There's no reason to fight over your inheritance for your inheritance is love. It's everything. The reason we are talking about this, to the extent that we are, is to confirm what Stephanie has been telling you, that this is wisdom that will withstand the test of time. There is no time. Therefore, we're making things like a little joke, of course, it will withstand the test of time. But this level, there is no time. We want you to appreciate these things 
And I'm feeling a tremendous energy, a tremendous energy of love. Is anyone else here feeling that? I'm feeling a lot of tingling. Yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. I can feel that it's just being showered down on this group right now. What's that? It's being showered down on this group right now. It's, uh, like it's going all, yeah. all the way down my yeah. feet. Or So just open your heart to it. Your heart is open already for you have heard these words, is what I hear. You have heard them and you have taken them home to your inner being where they can be processed. They can be, there is like they're being chopped up, regurgitated, and made part of your world. The finest things on earth are the things you step on and walk by every day. A blade of grass. And a little rock. The tree. The clouds above you in the sky. These are the finest things the earth has to offer its greatest treasures. The dirt. Without the dirt, could you survive as you know yourself? These are miracles. The love that went into the creation of the earth and all these facets of it is beyond contemplation experience. The dirt may feel more love than the human who walks upon it. It does its job. It doesn't complain about it. And that's what we've asked Stephanie to do to do her job. And each of you have a job. And you come into it. You step into it. You feel the tap on your shoulder and you step into your work. Whatever it may be. It's not all the same. It would be a silly world if everybody were doing the same thing, wouldn't it? Very regimented. In fact, that's why many are opposed to the regimentation in the schools and other institutions. Or they seek to suppress the truth of the human heart. The child wants to express. The child who in his exuberance wants to jump up and tell what he knows. Cannot do it in the past. This is not to say that we are opposed to the natural discipline of the human spirits. But there is a natural discipline. You awaken with the light, you sleep with the dark. There are many <clears throat> who do not follow this pattern, but the pattern has fallen into disuse because of artificial lighting, heating, shelter. Imagine what it was like to sleep in the dark outside under the trees with only the moss for a bit. Imagine what it was like when the day came. Can you see the sharp distinction between night and day that those who live in nature would experience? It would be like nothing and everything. And so you go through this every day, winter, summer. Now you have heated homes and air-conditioned homes, and you have a hard time distinguishing between winter and summer. You get in your car, you go to work. You get in your car, you go to the gym to work out, summer or winter. You swim in indoor pools. And so you lose the power of the opposites, of the concept of all and nothing, of the light and the dark. To reestablish this connection is to come home 
to your own being, your own heart, your own mind, your own soul. For you are both. You walk here as the sun and you live as the light and the light. And when you can understand this and feel free to move between the parts of yourself, not adhere to only one part, you will be a much happier soul, a much happier being, so you say. Or it's like a child that sees the snow in the winter and is all delighted and runs out with the first snow. The child experiences it is a wonder falling from the sun. It doesn't become less wondrous because he sees it a thousand times. It's still a wonder. So what has changed? Has the snow changed? Has the night changed? Has the day changed? Has the Christmas tree this year? Is it any worse than the Christmas tree you first saw when you were three? We keep adding, adding things. Adding things to the world to decorate it. It's like a house. You keep decorating to make it a little more decorated. You know, let's create this. Let's create that. Let's make our habitations finer and finer and finer. To distract you from the reality that you forgot what it's like to wake up in the morning to the light, to the dew on the grass, the sound of the birds, to go to sleep to the sound of the crickets. You've forgotten these things, and they are the finest things that the earth has to offer. So now, does anyone have any questions for what we have said? We know that Stephanie came in here with the hopes of having a little pep talk that would pump her up. <laughs> and instead, we've gone far afield, one might say, to, uh, to the depths, from the depths. However, this is important that we keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it over and over and over again. To you, to others, to you others, over and over and over again. And when you understand this, when you understand that you are all of it, then you can relax. What would you do to hurt yourself? When you realize that you move through life that you're the mother watching your children at play. You remember how once you were the children at play. And you remember that you are both. You live in your children, you know that. Your children hurt, you hurt. Your children laugh, you laugh. They're happy, you are happy. You want them to be happy. You want them to laugh. You want them to be well. Is this not true? And so that's the nature of things. It keeps replicating itself. All of creation is a replication of the fundamental truth. The fantastic system uh, reproduction in this world replicates the the moment of creation. Every child that's born. How long has that been going on in your history that children have been being born? How long has it been going on that people have been mothers and fathers? Brothers, sisters, cousins. How long have these relationships been going on? 
How many billions of them have happened? More than the sands upon the beaches. And yet each one of them is unique. Every one of them you experience as totally unique. And yet in the big picture, it's this grain of sand on the beach. In the picture from above of all of history, what is the relationship of two cousins? How many zillions of cousins have existed? And so when you are able to allow yourself to fly, to float free of your moorings, your moorings being your attachment to the concept of you as a feeble human body, you will get a bigger picture and that will enable you to become freer in how you live. And as you become free, you will live according to your own rhythm and not in accordance with the rhythm that others would force upon you. It's fine to work in tandem with others, to move to the same rhythm of others. That's beautiful. And if everybody followed their own rhythm, it would be quite a symphony. But you can't have a symphony if everybody's playing the same instrument and the same notes. Every once in a while, you'll see someone break free in terms of genius, as we call it. The singer, the child who just seems to be able to sing from the day it was born. The one who can write, the one who can paint. And the people who in their old age suddenly develop a skill that they never knew they had. They break free of their moorings. And, uh, and Stephanie's an example of this, breaking free of her upbringing, her bars, you might say, that were created through her family and society to live according to the rhythm of her own heart. This is something that was long in the making, and yet it didn't come into fruition until she was generally considered a senior citizen. By society. Washed up. Past useful stage, ready for the retirement home. <laughs> so the, the moments at which this energy bursts free may vary, and that's part of the wonder of it. That's part of the excitement of it. It's never too early, it's never too late to be you. So I think, although we haven't directly addressed your concerns, I think we have that. Through these offerings, she becomes who she is. And that's really all that matters. The rest is just so much scenery. So, any other questions for us? Any comments? Are we comprehending this? Mm -hmm. What we're talking about? Mm -hmm. If nothing else, we're here to keep reminding you, keep walking you over the head, keep pushing you, you know, to the place where you can see the whole lay of the land. And then you can come back into your illusions, your story, your creations. And then we'll pull you out again as long as you let us. As long as part of your destiny, your self definition is to grow in whatever way possible. 
Thanks for being here.